So we are almost there. We are have a uh, two and a half day conference. Uh, some of us will meet tomorrow or even on Friday. But uh, there's still a couple of issues that we have to deal with. And the first one is that we had um, a very nice range of posters. And uh, as usual with Nano Impact Net in the annual conference, we also give prizes. Prizes for the young investigator uh, who has prepared the nicest or the most informative poster. And uh, in this case, we have selected three. Uh, I'll be very brief on this one. Uh, the first one is from Melanie Cookie from, um, uh, with the title Nanocell Interaction, uh, sorry, Hide and Seek Endotoxin Detection in Nanoparticle Suspension, a poster that really tells you check how particles interfere with your assay. So, Melanie, is she here? So the award is not only a certificate, but also a certain amount of money. I'm not sure how much, but uh, it's... Thank you very much. The second prize is for Matthew Bowles from the University of Salzburg in Austria uh, with the assessment of uh, nanoparticles from gold, silver, and cerium oxide observed responses as associated to particle service charges. Matthew Bowles. And our first prize winner is um, somebody from Switzerland, from ETH Zurich, uh, from the Institute of uh, Chemical and Bioengineering, with poster development of a PBPK model to predict silver distribution within the human body after silver exposure via different routes. Gerald Bachler. And we don't have time to present all three posters, but the winner will present a few slides of his poster. Okay, thank you very much uh, for your voting. And I just have a brief three slides from my research. Uh, I start with why do we want to know it? It's because nano silver is the most common nanoparticle in consumer products. And to assess the exposure, uh, you can see here the increase and also the various uh, products you can have, dermally, inhalation, and orally. And to compare all these different routes and the silver nanoparticles and ionic silver, I tried to mes estimate the silver concentration in the human body with a physiologically based pharmacokinetic model. And this is the principal uh, compartment model. You see here the different uptake routes from dermally, inhalation, and orally, and from the blood circulation to the different organs. So once we have to, so we can predict the silver lev levels of the uh, realistic exposure. And can also see if there is an increased um, silver accumulation or aggregation in the, in the specific organs. As you can see, it's sometimes for uh, nanoparticular silver and spleens, but I will show this on the next slide. If you look at the aggregate exposure, you see that most of it is at the moment from uh, oral intakes, at least from consumer products, and also the highest amount is from ionic silver or silver salts. And some model results, if you compare the, 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 the distribution in the human body and you take a realistic dissolution of the silver nanoparticles, you can see with the same amount of silver, you have a, 
an accumulation and higher uh, concentrations in the different organs than compared to, to the ionic silver. Here is the case for cathedral, for cathedral uh, model run. And the highest concentrations that you have, as you also saw in, the, in all these animal studies, in the liver is the red line, and the kidneys and the spleen is the blue line. And if you compare the silver levels of different exposure scenarios, you can see that all the levels in the different organs are really, really small in the nanogram per gram uh, area, except for one consumer product I found, which is not normally used. It's silver water, this is a dietary supplement, where you can reach levels of micrograms per gram and where you can get to the levels where it can have toxic effects. Yeah, this was a short presentation. I don't want to steal more time. It's already quite late. Okay. So, Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all, and, and all those who, who have also voted for the people to, for their posts, and it gives them a nice opportunity to interact with the establishment with our seniors. Now, there are a couple of other things that we need to do before we close the conference. And one is that you saw that our session chairs had the opportunity to give presents, but they also arranged the sessions, and they were not here only today to, to share the sessions, but they did the work in front, getting the program and uh, compiling the program and, and selecting uh, the, the abstracts. So I'd like to have all the chairs of the session to come forward and they also get a present. So please, session chairs, thank you. That includes the symposium chairs, as Cecil uh, mentioned. So, they, they. <laughs> so this is j just take your place. And, uh, <laughs> we had too many photos. We see So thank you all for, for having uh, worked on, on getting this nice conference all put together uh, for your work uh, as, as session chairs and et cetera. You, you get some nice chocolates from, uh, nano, uh, from the Nano Impact Net uh, coordinator and deputy coordinator Michael Riedeker and Nino Lynch. Thank you again. I'm not sure if we make a group picture. Do we have a Yeah. Do Darren have the camera? Darren? Yep. <laughs> so, and we should, of course, not forget the person who actually started all this, and that's Michael Riedeker. We already acknowledge his achievements during our uh, meeting on, on Monday evening, uh, but he and his team have done a wonderful job to set up three conferences in Lausanne, but also this one in combination with QNano uh, was a, a, an achievement of Michael, and for that we also like to thank him. And uh, Iselt, where are you? Hi. Yeah, good. The deputy Iselt, again. And for, for those of you who don't know, Michael has, done, uh, has spent a tremendous amount of time uh, for doing work for Nano Impact Net, not only the scientific part, organizing all meetings, pre be pre uh, present at most of the workshop, training schools, etc., but also had a lot of interaction with Brussels and our uh, offices over there, 
uh, with some support from, from other people. Um, now, I, I know you will continue with QNano and still be active in this, this area, but you can reduce the amount of time here. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Mar uh, he's, he's becoming a father this summer, so he can some, spine, some time there with his uh, child. Michael, thank you again. Now, there are always people in the back who you don't hear but do a lot of things and, uh, and uh, do all the administrative issues, make care, take care of the registration, etc. Uh, so I also like those to come forward. That's, um, that's Myla Bender, that's Louisa McCarn, and uh, that is um, uh, Darren Hart, Andre uh, Fima, and uh, Jenna Moore. Please come forward. Without these people, we couldn't have been here. We couldn't have had this wonderful arrangement here at UCD, the food and, and everything here. So thank you again. You, ladies get the flowers, boys get the chocolates. Now there is one house.